It's been a while since I have shown you what's on my needles, so I thought that we would do a little February check-in and talk about what I'm currently knitting. I do have several FOs that I will be making separate videos about because I really want to go in depth on different modifications that I made and my overall experience with the pattern. Um, so I won't be showing, I'll, I'll show a pair of socks that I just finished, but I won't be showing um, any of those uh, garment FOs, but I will be showing what I'm currently knitting on, including this sweater, which if you saw the thumbnail, you can probably guess at what sweater this is because it's such a popular one. Um, and I will talk about that in just a moment. I made myself a cup of chai and it's really not the best chai that I've made. <laughs> so as I mentioned, I finished a pair of socks. These are the socks that I showed in my last um, project vlog. I can't remember how far along I was, but I do remember that I finished them shortly after. Um, and these socks are knit out of the Arne and Carlos uh, Regia Perfect sock yarn. And what colorway is this? It's called Summer Night. And it's a really nice colorway. It's probably my favorite colorway from the Perfect line. If you're not familiar with the concept of the Perfect yarn, it is basically one skein that gives you two perfectly matching socks. You don't have to change colors at any point while you're knitting. The yarn does that for you. So uh, you start with the, whether you're starting with the toe or the cuff, it doesn't matter. Um, but you start with the cream yarn in this case, and then I knit my cuff, two by two ribbing, you knit the leg, and then I started for the heel. For mine, I knit a heel stitch, heel flap, and gusset. And then for the toe, I did something a little bit different. Um, I think it's, it's like a mitten closure. Um, I found it in the Custom Socks book by Kate Atherley. It's very similar to the rounded wedge toe that I usually use, um, but the shaping is a bit different. And instead of kitchenering the top of the toe, um, you decrease until there are only a few stitches, and then you string your yarn through the stitches and pull it closed. So this was a fun pair to work on. If I was knitting a pair a month, which I am not officially doing that, but if I was, these would be my January socks. And then my February socks um, I have cast on and I'm working on. I'm doing something that I will occasionally do with socks where I'm knitting them both at the same time, but on different needles. So you can see I have this sock on DPNs and I have this sock on Magic Loop. And I am just now working the gusset decreases, which is why this looks so strange, but you can really tell what's going on here with my double points. This yarn is Knit Picks Felici, which is their self-striping sock yarn in the colorway Stormy Sky. And it's a very neutral colorway with grays, taupes, and blacks. I have just worked a two by two cuff and stock net for the legs. And then like I mentioned, I um, knit the heel flap, turned the heel, and I'm working on the gusset. And the way that I'm doing this, and I'll also explain the reason why I'm knitting these um, in tandem this way. I cast on one sock to double pointed needles and another to a circular needle for magic loop. I knit one cuff on one sock and the next cuff on the other sock. And then after that, I just alternated every stripe that I was knitting until I got to the heel. And then I knit the heel flap on one, knit the heel flap on the other, heel turn, heel turn, gusset stitches. And I'm kind of knitting the gussets. Um, I'm back to knitting like one stripe on each. Um, and the, really the only reason that I'm doing that is just to keep momentum with them so that I don't end up with one sock. It's just something that's a little bit interesting to do and I'm knitting them, you know, on different techniques. So if I do get bored with the magic loop, I can go to the double points and vice versa. And it just, I don't know, it carries my interest a little bit more than if I was just working on one finish and then work on the next one. Plus when I bind off, I am done with this pair of socks. So it's just, I don't know, it's not like it's any faster, but it just feels a little bit better to me. Um, and again, you know, I don't have to run into single sock syndrome. So that's why I'm doing that. The only other interesting thing about these vanilla socks is that I worked on Eye of Partridge heel flap, which gives a bit of a different texture than the traditional heel stitch. And I also think it adds a bit more durability to my heel. 
And then I also worked a garter stitch heel turn instead of a stockinette heel turn. So you can kind of see it there. I mean, it's really small. Um, that's the first time I had done that. I just thought, why not? <laughs> why not try it and see what happens? I do think that the alternating knits and purl rows and garter stitch is a bit more durable than just stockinette stitch. So that's what I did with these. Um, I change up my sock knitting a lot just to make it interesting for myself, but these are otherwise relatively plain standard vanilla socks. All right, now we can move on to the fun part, which is the sweater knitting. And if you didn't already guess, I am working on the Wool and Honey by Andrea Mallory. This was in my 2021 sweater knitting plans video, and this was one of those sweaters that I, I knew I was going to cast it on. I just needed to order the yarn and finish some other sweaters that I was working on. So here's what I have so far of the yoke. It uses a technique where you wrap stitches multiple times and then drop those wraps later on in the pattern to create these beautiful honeycomb hexagons. And it's just, it's such an interesting sweater. I know that, uh, I know it caught a lot of people's eye when it was first released. Um, so there's not a whole lot that I can uh, illuminate for you, you know, I, you're probably already very familiar with this sweater. <gasps> <laughs> my cat just came in and rubbed the leg of my tripod and moved my camera. As I was saying, I have only ever knit one yoke sweater. It was a colorwork sweater and I've just always been a fan of that construction. I think it just produces beautiful sweaters and you can do a lot of really cool things with it that, you know, other sweaters, other sweater constructions, um, can sometimes be a little bit limiting in what you can do with the yoke. With yoke sweaters, you usually separate the sleeves pretty far down on the yoke, and so you can create these very beautiful, uninterrupted patterns. The yarn that I'm using is Brooklyn Tweed Loft, and this is my first time ever working with Brooklyn Tweed yarn. I think what most people say about the yarn is pretty true. It is very fragile, so if I really pulled on the yarn right now, I could easily break this. Um, it's a two-ply woolen spun, so it is very, very airy and lightweight. It is spun with a lot of air, which makes it lofty, um, hence the name. And uh, I think the best thing about this yarn is that it really blooms when you block it. So I have an example of my swatch, which I ended up ripping out to save yarn, but I knit a swatch. I always knit swatches. And um, you can see the difference pre-blocking and post-blocking. It's it may be a little bit hard to see on camera, but in person you can see the difference very well and you can especially feel the difference. I saw a Ravelry comment that said this yarn is like working with a kitchen sponge and honestly that is a great description, especially in the color that I am knitting, which is Hayloft. I mean, it looks like a kitchen sponge. It's beautiful, but it, it really does kind of look like a kitchen sponge um, and it does feel that way. It's a little bit rough and I, I wouldn't say that it like feels nice and in fact it kind of hurts my hands as I'm knitting it. That also has to do with the fact that I'm knitting it on uh, such a small gauge. But yeah, it feels a little rough and it can kind of wear down on my hands as I'm working with it. And the key here is that it's not amazing before you block it, but once you do block it, it really blooms. And that's something that Brooklyn Tweed is very vocal about and they, uh, you know, frequently reassure their customers, you know, it's gonna get better when you block it. Um, and that's definitely true. That's just how this yarn works. I know that people have said this before and I don't know how I feel about it. It sounds a little bit elitist to me. I've heard people say that you have to knit this sweater in Brooklyn Tweed Loft. Um, mostly because of the way the yarn behaves. It is probably the stickiest wool I've ever worked with. And if you look closely at some of these hexagons, you'll notice that these very elongated stitches right here are not connected to the body except for at the top and the bottom of the stitch. And so this stitch really travels a long way here and it just sits on top of the fabric and that's the way that all of the hexagons work. So if you're not using a very sticky yarn, um, those stitches can really kind of move around on the fabric, maybe become a little bit more stretched out. But if you're using a yarn that really likes to stick to itself, um, you're not really going to run into any issues with this stitch pattern. So. 
I'm not gonna go so far as to say that you need to use Brooklyn Tweed Loft because there are plenty of other yarns out on the market right now that have that similar characteristic of really sticking to itself. And I know that there are a bunch of projects of people using different types of yarn. I think I saw someone use Holst uh, Super Soft. And I think that's what it turned out beautiful. And it is quite a bit cheaper than Brooklyn Tweed yarn. So that's just a note. Um, I'm kind of at a point right now in my life where I am just now able to start investing in my hobbies. So I was pretty excited to finally be able to uh, try out a yarn that's a little bit more expensive was previously out of my price range um so i'm having a lot of fun with it but like i said i don't think you have to use this yarn at all you know i will say i, I don't love the look of this sweater with a very slick yarn um and so i think you just need to be aware of that but brooklyn tweed's not the only company out there making this type of yarn i will talk about all of the modifications i'm making to this sweater in its own video because i'm making quite a few modifications um, I have an entire document where I have them all listed out and different links and stuff like that. So I'll be I'll be talking more in depth about this sweater when it's actually done. Um, but I did want to mention because you might be curious why uh, I started out with a provisional cast on here at the top. This is not in the pattern. The pattern has you begin with the ribbing on the neckline and do some short row shaping and then get into the patterned yoke. Um, there were a couple reasons why I decided to start with a provisional cast on. The first is that I am knitting the size extra small and I've noticed in some other people's projects that the extra small has a very very small neckline compared to the other sizes. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of that. That's its own look but I'm not a huge fan of a sweater that's like in between a crew neck and a mock neck. I'd rather it be a mock neck or a crew neck um, and some of the projects to me looked like they were they were in between that style um, and I just wasn't a huge fan of that I wanted something that sat a little bit more like a crew neck so I'm planning on modifying the ribbing in the short row shaping so I wanted to be able to try the sweater on and figure out where the beginning of the yoke hits on me before I decide you know how much ribbing I want to knit and I can just really um, modify that based on how it's looking on my body. So that's the first reason. And then the second reason is that the pattern is written so that the neckline ribbing is one by one and all the other ribbing in the sweater is two by two. And I think that this is a really interesting choice. Like, I think it's a cool choice. I'm not a fan of matching things. So for the ribbing to be different, I think that's just a really neat element. Um, but I haven't decided if I'm going to knit it that way. I may decide to change it to two by two ribbing to match the rest of the ribbing. I'm just completely undecided on it. So I just decided I'll think on it while I'm knitting the sweater and decide later. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So that's what I'm currently knitting on. Um, I do have some future knitting plans that I wanted to chat about, including my next sweater cast on. Um, I've been pretty monogamous with my knitting lately, but I've realized I do like to have two sweaters going at one time. And generally, I like them to be different enough that they're just engaging in different ways, or maybe they're different yarn weights or something like that. Um, and that just keeps my knitting interesting for me. Um, I also like to have one mindless project on the needles at all times. I know that's a very common practice among knitters, um, whether that's a pair of socks or just something very mindless stuck in, in the round that you really don't have to think about. Um, so I've decided once I finish the pair of socks that I'm working on right now, and I do have to finish them, that's a rule. Um, once I finish those, I'm going to cast on an easy beanie for myself. I realized that I don't really have just a black basic beanie and that's something that I really need. <laughs> and coincidentally, in my stash, I have these two skeins of black sock weight yarn. This is from Valley Yarns. It is their Huntington line and I love this yarn. I've spoken about this yarn quite a bit over the years. Um, I just think it's a really affordable sock yarn. I've knit it for socks several times. I also uh, worked this yarn in a shawl and now I'm going to knit a hat. I haven't officially decided what pattern I'm going to use but I think that I'm going to knit the Muscleborough hat by Isolde Teague. 
Um, that one's kind of been making the rounds among the podcasting, the knitting podcasting world. Um, I've seen quite a few people knit this hat and I think it's going to be the perfect hat for me. Um, the Oslo hat by Petite Knit is another super popular one, um, but I think I'm gonna go with the Musselburgh hat um, because I think I like that one a little bit better and it uses some interesting techniques that I am excited to work again. I think I've worked them before, but I'm excited to to learn to relearn those because it's been a few years. So yeah, that'll be my next mindless knitting uh, when I'm in meetings or you know, end of the work day and my brain is shot, um, I can just knit stockinette in the round and not think about it. And then the next cast on is going to be a sweater. And I've started the gauge swatch here. It says gauge swatch in the round. Um, this is going to be the Chuck by Andy Satterland. It is a cropped, uh, somewhat tight fitting, I think it actually has negative ease, um, cabled sweater. And Andy Satterland was probably the first knitting designer or, or knitting personality that I came across, um, or at least one of the first, and I loved everything she did. I followed her blog, Untangling Knots, which she may still write on occasionally, I'm not sure, but I read every blog post, I watched every tutorial, I really just soaked everything up that she had to say, and ever since then, you know, I've loved her designs, and I've always wanted to try one. I remember thinking I could never knit the Chuck sweater. Like, it was just, it was way too complicated, and I, I had, I, I was very new to knitting at the time, I'd done some crochet, and I just remember thinking like, nah, I just could never do that. And I've realized, like, I've knit more complicated things than the, than the Chuck sweater since then and uh, you know I think it just stuck in my mind and it was always something that I knew I was going to knit eventually. I just feel like I have to kind of get it out of my system plus it's a beautiful sweater and it has an interesting set in sleeve construction where you knit it seamlessly and in the round um, and so you can get the sort of tailored fitted look of a set in sleeve sweater but you don't have to put all the work into knitting it flat and seaming um, and I just wanted to try that. I'm not sure if I'll love it but I have always wanted to try it so I thought why not. Another reason I wanted to knit this sweater is the yarn. This is another Brooklyn Tweed yarn and I'm sorry this is so Brooklyn Tweed heavy of a video. I am just knitting what my heart wants. <laughs> um, I got this yarn from their tent sale over the summer and I don't know how I managed to get it but I did and it's one of those uh, like special yarns where they only made it once and like they didn't really like it enough to sell it and so they sold it on sale. So it was probably like half off or maybe even more than that. It was a really great deal um, but I could only get what I could get and I think I got seven skeins. So I have about 700 yards of this uh, worsted weight special yarn that <laughs> they don't sell. Um, there's nothing wrong with the yarn. It just, for whatever reason, did not um, pass their QA or uh, they just didn't want to sell it. They wanted to make it different or better. I don't really know. But anyway, I have the yarn and um, it's really nice. I like it. This is all that I have. This was the only color I could get. I almost like regretted buying it because I was like, there's not gonna be a sweater <laughs> that I can knit with this. But a cropped negative E sweater is the way to go. And I think I have just enough yarn. So I'm gonna go. I am going to keep knitting on this gauge swatch. I hope that you are hanging in there and finding some happiness and escapism in your knitting and I will see you in the next one.